How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week four, and we've got our easy game of the season in front of us. We're going on the road to play Troy, uh, a Sunbelt team, an old conference foe of ours. Um, but they're B minus overall. They're not great. Who have they played? Uh, they've played Boston College and Boise. They lost both of them. Honestly, pretty close game against Boston College. A little bit scary there, but we've started this season very, very strong. Beat a very good ranked Notre Dame team uh, and then blew out Virginia and Syracuse all on the road. Um, so I feel relatively confident. This is probably the easiest game on our schedule. And, uh, you know, we're top 10 right now. We have... Marquise Jackson, second place in the Heisman standings right now, which is pretty incredible. Um, but let's take a look at the top 25. We should have, beautiful, some top teams potentially losing. Number one, Texas. Number six, Auburn will play. Number three, Georgia and 18, Bama. We are rooting for Alabama here because we're fighting Georgia for some recruits. So if their, uh, their bonus points on said recruits dropped, that would be fantastic for us. Number nine michigan yeah number nine michigan will play number 22 wisconsin anything else no that's it for the ranked matchups in the top 25 ohio state and florida state dropped out last week kind of interesting um i want to see a lot of these top teams start to take some losses the quicker that we get up this board the easier it's going to be to stay there and the more leeway I think that we'll have if we do manage to take a loss on this season. Uh, we have a couple points to put into recruiting, so let's do that. Right off the bat, though, we do have six guys. I didn't realize it was that high. Six guys ready for their visits, so we will try to start to set those up, and I'm not sure where we send them. Uh, we could go against Cincinnati. They're a ranked team. It's a game that we should win but they're out of conference and you do get extra points on the visit for beating a conference opponent. Uh, and we want it to be a good conference opponent. So right now it looks like we're going to send everybody that we can to the Miami game in week eight, except I'm going to hold off for a little bit with Spencer Stanley. That's the main guy that we are fighting Georgia for. So I'm curious, I think to see where they send their visit because it could be that we need to send him late week 12 at duke or something so we'll try to hold off there i'm sure i'll forget that and schedule him next week or something but uh at least for now we'll give georgia a chance to schedule theirs and then we'll be able to respond otherwise we'll start sending the guys to the uh miami game and that'll give us the bonus points and, and the extra xp um you know trying to get those complimentary visits now four guys to be scouted we haven't scouted them yet because we're behind on them and i honestly don't even think they're gonna last uh any longer on this board they're all losing a bunch of points um i might have to go through and take some players off and uh, reassess what we've got going on and i think we might just be giving out a couple more scholarships this week for our points with will dixon we're gaining on Illinois, which is great news. We've got the lead and we're gaining on Penn State with Craig Chris Douglas. Spencer Stanley still losing that five a week towards Georgia or against Georgia. It looks like it could get a little bit worse, but again, if they lose this week, that would be fantastic for us. Um, in the lead with Nick Pittman, Jeremy Callahan, we're in the lead. Jeremy Harrison, we're slowly gaining. Um, open for the best. Not great bonus points, honestly, for us there, but we're not out of the running. Here we're fighting Ohio State. So all the guys that we're giving points to, we're definitely in the battle. Uh, in this running back, Ian Bain. We've got a big lead. And again, this season, we're going to just try to continue to give points to somebody until they commit. Try to get those commits early because I don't want to have to wait until the offseason. So let's just offer uh, a few scholarships this week. And I think we'll call it good there. Ian Bain, finally give him his. Actually seems a little bit late. And then we'll offer some scholarships to guys that we're in front of but not actively recruiting. So David Jackson's pretty solid. Jason Rollins is solid. And Lonnie Bryan, I think, is 74 overall. So offer him as well. Trying to get these scholarships out. And um, I might go through and take a couple of these guys off. Some of these guys that are way far behind and maybe replace them with guys that like us a little bit more or aren't actively being recruited. But other than that, that'll be our recruiting for this week. So Troy, again, they've just been updated recently with the revamped mod. So that's why we're playing them 83 overall. We have a 10 overall edge on these guys. 
uh, even bigger on offense, uh, pretty even bigger <laughs> 12 on defense. So I expect this to be really, really solid for us. Uh, again, we're wearing the all white until we lose on the road this season. So until we lose on this opening massive road trip spree that we're going on, which really only has two games left. So uh, it seems like we should be pretty confident that we'll get to wear the all whites for all, for all five games. We might not win that fifth game, but I expect us to win this fourth one. Uh, and Troy, they've got their updated stuff, including the interesting smoke uniforms uh some interesting uh i don't know gradient on the helmet uh, a lot of alternate options and i like this alternate seven because i like the smoke pants more than say this one i'm not a huge fan of that gradient on the helmet um but i do like the pants quite a bit so let's go with that the cardinal helmet and jersey and then the smoke pants for the troy trojans we used to play these guys in conference. Now it's out of conference and we're hoping it to just uh, honestly give them a beat down. So Owen to Troy, uh, pretty mediocre on offense. Nothing to write home about defense. They are one of the worst in the country. So they give up a lot of points and a lot of yards. Our defense is very good. Our offense statistically doesn't look good, but that's because our special teams has scored so many touchdowns this year. Their top players Barely cracking the 90 overall mark with a center running back and then a free safety. Um, all of our guys are on hot streaks. Uh, unless I am playing poorly, uh, you know, if my user's bad, that's the only way that I could see us losing this game. I really hope I'm not made to uh, eat those words as we have arrived at the Veterans Memorial Stadium here on the Troy campus. And of course, we're going tails because, uh, well... <laughs> failed us a uh, couple of times this season but we will be starting with the football so Marquise Jackson back to return to start this game off not the worst kick they get it into the end zone but you know we're bringing it out I got to expect the blocking to be at least decent and nah they did a good job gunning down the field and cutting us off one thing that has certainly been a problem this season has been our running game uh, just unable to find big, big plays. And we're consistently getting stopped short like this, even against pretty bad Troy. I think if anybody's going to have a, an easy time today, it's going to be Marquise Jackson. First play, I'm throwing it up. Oh, man, this guy's tailing with him. And a little tip drill there. Lucky that that one wasn't picked off. So doesn't quite work out. Uh... Maybe a little bit aggressive in a in a stupid way. Radon, going to run for this. We're not going to be able to get it. Fourth and three. I refuse to punt the ball away on our opening drive against freaking Troy. So we're making a potentially very dangerous play as we will look to throw. He's open. Marquise dropped it. it. was a little bit late getting it there. Let's hope the defense can get a stop. Oh, like I said, we're only going to lose if I make stupid decisions. So first in 10. And, well, we brought the blitz. And they got the pass off for four yards. Let's see what else can happen here. They step back to pass again. Running back's open, but he's not the only one. Chris Quinn, eight yards, first down, just outside the 10. I'm just going to keep blitzing until we get a stop. It has to happen eventually. Kind of expecting the run. No, they step back to pass one more time. And there's a wide open man. Manny Stokes can't get the tackle. Chris Quinn's into the end zone. <laughs> oh, not like this. Well, number five, Washington at least has lost. Unranked UCLA slaughtered them. They'll definitely be ranked now as they're three and one. And Clemson in a battle with an unranked Arkansas State. Hopefully we can avoid the upset and then they can all get upset. That would be great. Uh, we're going to return this one again. Going to the other side this time. No blocking again on the edge. If we don't get the edge block, we can't really return those at all. The scoreboard was glitched and when I went to try to fix it, I accidentally took a timeout. So we're starting this drive with a timeout taken as we find a pass to Logan Malden. Finally get a first down in the game. And I'm just going to keep passing. All game long. I think that's the easiest way for us to try to beat these guys. Um, throwing a couple of runs, maybe some read options, but I got to expect our receivers to be better than their defensive backs. 
So we'll go with the air attack as it looks like they want to bring pressure. Oh, they're pressuring up on Marquise Jackson. That could be their fatal mistake. He's got to step on his man. He's going to come down with it and break the tackle, and he's gone. Number two in the Heisman rankings right now. And that's going to help out quite a bit. The 67-yard touchdown reception. And Marquise with the beautiful broken tackle. Good job getting the pass off before the pressure got to us. And we've tied it up just like that. So this kick is away. And we will force them to take the touchback. Finally got one deep enough into the end zone. Well, let's see what the defense can do with uh, the whole field to work with. Not getting pressured with uh, bad field position. Oh, it's not, not a great start. Not a great start. Vital gets 16 on the first carry. Vidal picks up 16 on his first carry. They're going to go to him again up the middle. And thank goodness Taylor's there to get the tackle. So only giving up four. They're really playing the hurry up as this one's out towards the edge. And there's a lot. Wow. A lot of white jerseys for him to somehow get forward. Although it's like he's maybe banged up his knee on that play. And big third down for us as they will go to the air to slip screen. They're just in time with Riley. And uh, well, we get the stop and we'll get the ball back. Our boy Marquise already has one touchdown on the game. I don't expect him to make it two here, but things could be a little bit weird. That kick awfully close to the sideline means we have a lot of room to run out towards the other edge. And they're taking weird angles. Marquise running along long distance to pick up 23 yards on the return and of course we will look to the air on this first down quick throw to dj johnson gets us an easy six yards and puts us that much closer to midfield and look at how they're playing marquise again jamming him up at the line although they do drop a safety back and that frees up dj johnson he broke a tackle but two guys in front of him able to take him down and there's 24 yards for us again through the air just feels to me like we don't have a great reason to uh, not throw the football right now. They do a good job stopping that little bubble screen. And we will try to throw in a counter here to throw them off. That running back out for the game with a pulled groin for uh, the Trojans. So they're definitely going to miss him. He started great, but got injured very early. And we've got a third down to try to convert. Again, they're pressed up. On our boy Marquise, he's going to be wide open. He's got the little comeback route. We find him just inside the 10. Easy first and goal, and it's his third reception of the day. And we will look to the running back and Braden Bennett to score here. Maybe, oh, risky throw, and it goes over the head. A Tyson Mobley, I just didn't feel like it was a safe throw to Bennett, so checked away from him. I think we're far enough out for an option to potentially work, so we will try the read. Right on, plenty of space in front of him, gets the block and does get hit from behind, but he's already into the end zone. And we finally take the lead in this game. I'm telling you, this needs to be a blowout, otherwise I'm going to be very worried about some, uh, some other games in this season. And Arkansas State has tied up that game against Clemson very late in the fourth quarter. If they just want to go ahead and lose, I would not mind it. That would be so good for us. Bad for us in the recruiting sense because it would hurt our conference prestige, but very good for us in the ranking sense. Let's see if they continue to run. I'm honestly expecting it a little bit as the tight end will come in motion. And no, they're going to step back to pass. Quarterback's actually going to scramble. And what can we do to get him? He breaks one tackle and then just goes for a little stiff arm cheese out of bounds. That's not exactly optimal. This time they step back to pass and pressure got to him as he was releasing it, but he gets it out in time and finds the backup running back. So they seem to be doing a very good job of getting these passes off. This one's a run, little wide receiver sweep action and they lose two yards. So third and long and that looks like it's going to end the first quarter. So up 14-7 feels like we could get the ball back here. Uh, realistically, they only got points because of our mistake, you know, giving them the ball basically at the 25-yard line. Uh, but great touchdown for Marquise and uh, right on with a decent read option to get in as well. So we'll see. 
can we get this stop? They've already gone with one slip screen. They're not going with another quarterback feeling some pressure. Has to release it off of his back foot. Threw it very close to three players in white jerseys, but it does hit the turf. And it will be the punt formation once again for Troy. And this one is going to be returned. It might be a mistake. Never mind. I accidentally switched off Marquise. And I guess we'll take the touchback. Uh, maybe the safer option. Going to try the handoff on first down. And again, looking for block. CJ Beasley not going to have the speed, but he does break another tackle. He gets 23 yards on the play. Could be one of his longest of the season so far. That was just a beautiful little gap that opened up for him. And with no deep safeties and nobody really dropping back, I'm going to look for Marquise over the middle, wide open on the post. Maybe a little bit of added flair. Is he trying to give himself highlights for his Heisman campaign? A diving one-handed grab when he was wide open. Maybe a... I don't know. He should have been able to catch that, no problem. I can't complain too much, though. Worked beautifully. Look at this. They want to bring pressure. It seems foolish to me because why would we not put Marquise on a fade route and just see who it is that's going to be wide open? Look at there it is. Malcolm Williams completely unguarded. What are they thinking trying to bring that much pressure against us? Uh, I can't complain. I really can't. 21 to 7 and we're starting to open this one up. Maybe we can finally turn it into that blowout. It would all start though with a big defensive stop on this drive. 5-11 left in the second. A good chance for us to really just blow things apart for Troy. And we're going to put some pressure on the Trojans here with a blitz on. First down, they're going towards the edge. Phillips can't get the tackle, but he slows him down. And Emmanuel Bush can get there. Curious to see if we can manage to create maybe a turnover at some point in this game. They're looking to pass over the middle. They found a man who was just blanketed by defenders and still comes down with it. Chris Quinn is having a very good game to this point as I was bringing a little corner blitz and they ran it right up the middle. He's got the broken tackle. It's up to Kale Mackey to stop this. He can't get it. Durham Finch, wow. This dude is incredibly fast. Touchdown saving tackle there. And I refuse to allow them to run this one up the middle. So we're going with the engage eight. Really an engage nine. We get the quarterback to throw it away and we can make some subs and get our true goal line formation out. So the tight end will be unguarded, but we're going to be looking to bring pressure and set tight end. Oh, I almost jumped the route with Aaron Jenkins. Can't haul it in, but we get to the third and goal. And here I am a little bit worried about them running the ball. And it looks like a hand up. Phillips is there, but he can't get the stop. Phillips can never get the clutch tackle. It seems like always just bouncing off of the ball carrier. And so we made the right play. We executed almost perfectly. And uh, they just happened to get in. Clemson survives the upset 44 to 41. And now I'm just sad because I really did think we had that stop. Um, maybe we can just let the defense get right back out onto the field. No, there's literally no blocking for Marquise today. Special teams has taken a break this week, it seems. So all I can say is thank goodness that we have the uh, the offense firing on all cylinders as we're going to try to scramble with Radon, and thank goodness he held on to that one. Play action didn't quite work. They got the pressure there too quickly. And we'll go with another run on this second down, and again, the blocking not quite there. Brayton doing a good job to make up anything on that play as he got three yards. And now again from inside the 25, we have another big third down to try to convert. And this might be a really risky throw. Tyson Mowley comes down with it. I don't know if he has the speed to take it to the house, but he's going to get awfully close. The 10 diving for the line and he can't get there. Just the shoestring save prevents that from being a big touchdown as Radon already has 271 passing yards in the half. The safety went for the big play and just missed the ball. So with J.J. Barr going up the middle, we've got ourselves another touchdown. The good news is we can score with ease pretty much right now. It's just that the defense needs to get their stops a little bit more consistently. Another kickoff, this time being returned by Troy. And oh my gosh, thank goodness Bradshaw got blocked right into him because he had a lot of space in front of him. 
How about the zone blitz on this first down? They're going to step back to pass. That has me a little bit worried. Quarterback, plenty of time. Finds his man. Manny misses. Kale has his tackle broken, and they got five yards. And second and five. They look like they're going to step back to pass. Quarterback's going to scramble. Broke one tackle. Broke another. Broke a third. And just showing too much strength as he came close to breaking another one, but there is a holding. Penalty saves us on that one. So instead of a first down, their quarterback took all those hits and now has to deal with a second and 15, which is just all good news for us. They're going to throw it out in the flat and said running back only gets two yards this time. So I expect uh, the defense to do a decent job here. On third down, stepping back to pass. Smith, good tackle from Logan. Gets the stop, brings up the fourth down. And because we took the timeout earlier... Oh, I was thinking they were going to burn the clock down a little bit there. They don't. Instead, they kick it away way early. And Marquise has a semi-returnable punt. He didn't get the corner, but he's got us near midfield regardless. And of course, the way it's going today, we're going to step back to pass on first down. And this is a risky throw. It gets tipped at the line. And Logan Malden, how do you not catch that? What wide receiver can't hold on to that ball? Instead, it's incomplete, and we'll have to deal with a second down as there's Tyson Mobley, and he's got another 24 yards. A big completion on this down could put Radon well above 300 on the day. As, oh, I was looking for the check down to the man who went in motion, but instead I don't get the pass off, and we lose 11 yards on the sack. And I'm trying to pay a little bit of attention to the clock, but I don't want to burn a timeout or anything. Looking over the middle, there's Bradshaw, and Chad gets us the first down, so that'll stop the clock. And we'll look to pass again. First down, waiting, scrambling, and not picking up a block. We're going to go in the hurry up here. Don't want to take the timeouts just yet. Instead, we get the defense out of position. B was open. Right, bumpers open. There's Chad Bradshaw again, and he's got the first down, so that or the first and goal, so that'll stop the clock. And we've got no reason not to continue to pass, or we could just well <laughs> let's let's go for the passing touchdown. Could have easily scrambled and maybe made that a little bit more risky than it needed to be, but uh, give Raid on the passing touchdown, give Malcolm Williams a receiving touchdown, and uh, well we find ourselves up another touchdown in, on this lead. It is 35-14. I've made this intentionally a returnable kick to burn a little bit of the clock off. And ooh, kind of a weird hit, but they go down with 24 seconds to try and do something. Curious to see if they come out and try to pass, or will they just run the clock? Oh my gosh, it's a fumble. Sidney McRae picks it up, and Sidney McRae is going to get the defensive touchdown on the scoop and score. Oh, I hope they don't overturn this by reviewing it and seeing that it was not a fumble, but that looked pretty clean to me. Defense might have created the turnover. They don't review it, so we can kick this extra point. And now we're up 42-14. That is phenomenal for us. As uh, Who knows, maybe they'll throw up a pick and we can score again. <laughs> this is a lot of first half points for our team. I see, like... There's no way that they don't just hand this off as there's the tackle. I'm going to take the timeout. Let's force them maybe to make a mistake. You never know. We can't save our timeouts, so we might as well try to get them into a bad spot as it's third and 14, and there's probably nothing else that we can do. But I've gone ahead and told the team to go for the big hits and get aggressive on stripping the ball, so hopefully we come away with this one. Or no, it'll just be fourth down. As uh, we should go into the half here. Clock finally. There it goes. It's that triple zero. 369 total yards for us. It's pretty nice. 42-14. Uh, we will be giving Troy the ball. But the way the defense has been playing. And the way the offense has been playing. Uh, all that's left is just to get to the end of the game. While we're here at this half. Decent time to ask you guys to uh, maybe hit like. If you're enjoying the video. Easy way to help out the channel. And... Show some support, and uh, let's go ahead and say 100 likes on this video uh, within the first day. We'll go back-to-back -back uploads. Why not?
I'm really curious if we can manage to get another turnover. I think on the season, because of that fumble, that we might be at just zero at a net even uh, in the turnover differential, so maybe we could go positive. I certainly don't expect it, but it would be a nice surprise, as I'm just now realizing I still am telling these guys to go for hard hits and strips. I gotta make sure I change the adjustment there. Also a little bit concerning that Troy able to uh, pick up that easy of uh, first down. As this one is a screen, I kind of got stuck with Riley and... Okay, we only lost a yard on that play. They will step back for another screen. Nobody was ready. I couldn't use her to a guy. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a touchdown. This is a joke. I couldn't switch my user in time, so they're going to score. Oh my gosh. Very, very frustrating. They go back-to-back -back screens and it works. I just couldn't get to a guy to get over there. Ugh. Disappointing. Give up a touchdown there. So now we're only up three scores. Which, honestly, I'm very, like, surprisingly angry at that. That is just so peeved that that happens as, uh, again, literally nothing that we can do on the kick returns today. 0 for 4 on our success right there. I don't even know if we've made it past the 25-yard line, which is just oh so disappointing. Good little juke there. Easy first down on the quarterback keeper. And we're going to continue to pass, looking for a new target. Oh, my gosh. This game is just falling apart now. Troy must have made some very impressive halftime adjustments as uh, they're going to just continue to move. They get the ball back, and within a minute of this first half, they are looking like they're about to score 14 points. Our coverage has broken down. Uh, I'm not sure if we know how to tackle. There's another... Oh, wow. Come on, pick it up. Okay, Manny Stokes picks up the fumble. <sighs> I don't know what's going on. We got lucky there. That's all I'm going to say. So, let's see. They just had a big play, then we had one. I want to look for another one. I'm going to see if we can find somebody uh, on just like a go route. Mobley and Jackson both set. I think Marquise could get there. Oh. He was going to have a stop on his man. I don't know if Radon would have the arm strength, but where it is, we're throwing. So the ball just falls incomplete, and it brings up a third and one. So try to run this up the middle. Blocking good enough, but we bounce it just a little bit to the edge to try to find extra yards, and we're successful that time. And I want to run the read, but look at how stacked they are on that side of the line. I'd be foolish not to send my boys deep. They are bringing a big blitz, and... Probably could have made a throw there, but instead we're going to go for the scramble. And this ball is coming back immediately because our team just can't stop shooting itself in the foot. And there's a clipping. So who knows how far this is going to bring us back. First and 10. Okay, well, at least it was far enough downfield. Very much frustrating to lose those easy yards, however. As again, I'm going to leave. No, B's open. Give it to Tyson and... Let him get some positive yards. Might have been able to get more with the scramble, but um, don't want my quarterback taking too many hits. And I'm just going to keep it going. Basically an air raid team today. Oh, almost threw a pick. Chad Bradshaw got to the ball. Couldn't hold on to the contact from the safety. And I just don't think my play calling has been very good today. Second and 10. Trying the read option. I think we're getting bailed out by just having, you know, such uh, a high overall advantage over them. But things could definitely be going a little bit better for us. Almost threw a pick. Wow. Looking for CJ Beasley. I saw the linebacker there. Still threw the ball, though. So on this play, I could kick the field goal and try to take the points. Instead, we're going to have Radon throw off his back foot. What a throw to somehow get that to DJ Johnson off his back foot across his body. Unfortunately... He got hit as he was throwing, and he's slow to get off the field. So it'll be Williams coming in at the quarterback spot, and, well, he found Marquise, but he couldn't hold on to the contact on the first play. And I'm a little bit worried for Radon. Uh, hopefully Williams can get it done at least the rest of this game if he needs to, but the running game just isn't there at all this season right now. And we're being made to rely on this quarterback's arm. And it's the Williams to Williams connection. David finds Malcolm. He gets into the end zone. We do score. 
allow us to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. And we can just, I don't know, hope the defense gets a stop. They were lights out in the, uh, in the first half and then just kind of gone downhill. They have forced a couple of turnovers, but I expect more from these guys. So Radon has a strained calf, which means he's out for the rest of the game. So hopefully uh, David Williams can get it done. Uh, I got to expect he can. This looks like it could be a screen quarterback scrambling. I just whiffed on the tackle and quarterback gets 18 yards because of it. Kind of tried to get a little bit too aggressive looking for the hit stick on the QB and it didn't work out as he scrambles again. And Logan Smith has his tackle broken and Kyle Tool picks up 10 more yards on the ground. Not what I like to see. Second and inches, what will we uh, have to come up against? They'll look to pass again, and wow. That was way too open of a man there. They're cruising down the field. Really, honestly disappointed that we don't have a bunch of sacks to this point. Quarterback looks like he's scrambled again, and it's another strip sack there as they're lucky an offensive lineman falls onto it, but they do lose a couple of yards. This quarterback seemingly has butterfingers today. Looking for the screen, and we get the stop. Third and nine, trying to hold these guys to just a field goal. And we've got a big third and nine to try and prevent them from converting as they'll step back. There's another screen, quarterback scrambling. He gets hit, it's a sack, it's a loss of three more yards. He's lucky he held on to that one because that was a pretty big hit from behind. And it'll be the field goal formation. This is, uh, this is a long kick for these guys. So we'll see if we can get the stop or, or get the return as Marquise was there. Just a little bit too long. Short of the uh, the make on the field goal, but too long to return it. So defense does hold. It is very important that I remember that we do not have raid on Randell for the rest of this game and that we make maybe a little bit safer throws for uh, the rest of the day. Also might be smart just to try to start burning a little bit of the clock as this will likely be the final play of the third quarter and CJ Beasley is going to lose a yard. Uh, maybe trying to do a little bit too much with the spin move and the little cut, but uh, we're up a lot. We, we got our job done early enough in the game that we can kind of coast at this point, and I think that that's what we're going to need to do. So we'll run the ball on third and seven to get the clock moving on this fourth quarter and... Well, we pick up the first down. I wasn't expecting that counter to work as well as it did. I was kind of just thinking we were going to punt it away. But with the clock now moving, we can just continue to run the ball and maybe make them look a little bit foolish as somehow our running game has just caught on fire in the past couple of plays. How about the jet sweep on second and five? Again, the Williams to Williams connection as Malcolm trying to get towards the corner. <laughs> Gets tackled from behind. He got two yards out of the play, at least. We've definitely seen worse as on a third and three. We'll go big eye formation, hand it off up the middle and let CJ Beasley pick up the first down on the ground. We're just going to keep running the ball. There's no reason for me to go away from it at this point. Even if they get us to a third and long, maybe we pass there. But second 11, definitely going to keep it on the ground. In fact, let's test out how good Williams' legs are. Give him a read option? No, he has to hand it off anyways, and it works too beautifully as Beasley picks up 17 yards. Uh, getting the handoff on that play. Good downfield blocking there. Really just not a whole lot that they can do to stop us, it seems. All of a sudden, having some success on the ground as Brayden Bennett running the wrong direction, and then... Oh, uh, <laughs> what a play! He got the first down. How did that turn into 12 yards? That was a phenomenal run. <laughs> Backup got it done there. Can't do it again on the second attempt as it's now second and 12. And as we've hit two and a half minutes now left in the fourth quarter, we can go a little bit of play action and then maybe the tough throw over the middle. Williams to Williams doesn't work that time. So the defender broke that one up. So it is third and 12 and we're going to go with a little triple option on this play. See if it works, see if I can make the right reads at all, and looks like we did. Oh gosh. Didn't think about the fact that this quarterback probably can't juke very well, and I just let David get laid out on the play. Unfortunately for this defense, 
I'm not done yet. Because I do not want their defense to be able to come out onto the field. Which means we're throwing and we're finding JJ Barr for the first goal at the one. So that we can continue to burn the clock on this drive. And assuming that Troy doesn't take the timeouts. We're going to knee the ball a couple times. And then go for the touchdown pretty much last second. Hopefully they, they don't think too poorly of us if we do manage to you know get the ball into the end zone here on what will be the final play of the game we can get this one off quick enough who knows maybe we have time for two attempts at the end zone tough throw there's dj johnson <laughs> and i hear a couple of boos coming from the uh the stands i can't blame them i'm just gonna say i was giving my backup quarterback a little bit more experience he's got to be more game ready you just never know when radon's gonna get injured uh, during a bigger game than this. So the more prepared the backup is, the better it could end up being for us as we'll probably see just one final play from Troy as there's two seconds left. And to prevent any sort of potential BMing from this Trojans team right back at our faces, we will, uh, well, we'll just kind of go up into the man up 3D. Let him take the 11 yards. It might hurt our defensive rankings at the end of the day, but... We won! It's a blowout, 56 to 21. We've done it for the third game in a row as we are now 4-0. Again, all four games on the road. And it is looking really, really good to start this season. We know at least one of the top 10 teams in front of us lost. Hopefully we see a couple more, uh, but what a game for us there. Um, all around, pretty solid. We forced some turnovers. And, we, you know, we made some stupid mistakes and bad play calls. And there was a couple of missed tackles that they allowed them to score as many points as they did. But uh, a pretty solid, complete game for us. So, uh, they outgained us on the ground. They had a couple of really big running plays that just, I think, inflated their rushing yard statistics. But uh, we passed for way more than them. 386 is one of the highest numbers that we've achieved because we just have never had big passing games you know we have big plays here and there but never as consistently as we did on this one 28 second quarter points is pretty impressive as you know we controlled the clock the entire game and uh you know realistically we controlled the score the entire game as well right on randell is our offensive player of the game good passing game his career high for sure i have no doubt about that a couple of carries for a decent amount of yards and four total touchdowns and durham finch with the sack the forced fumble uh, I mean, he had a touchdown saving tackle at one point where he chased a man down. Definitely deserving of that defensive player of the game. So we earn another win as we do advance again to that 4-0 mark. Two games away from already being bowl eligible and we're only in week four of the season. As we will go to our final game of this long road trip against Georgia Tech. Another conference opponent in week five and with some luck, maybe we'll be a top five team. And we have more recruits ready to visit. What are we ranked? Number five. We are a top five team here. Oh my gosh. We must have seen a little bit of chaos. First, a look at Georgia Tech. We're even on overall. Exactly the same. Uh, both good offenses. We just have a slightly better defense. And look at that. All the way at the bottom. Turnover differential. A zero in our column. That is so rare to see this many games into the season. I want that to be positive. We're so close because we are favored to win. And let's see, top 25 polls, what happened? We know Washington lost to UCLA. Uh, what else happened? Let's see, Clemson had to win in overtime against Arkansas State as Texas beat Auburn. Uh, I think, yeah, oh, I don't see Georgia. Alabama beat them. Oh, so the number three team in Georgia falls to Bama. Number six team in Auburn falls to Texas. So we saw what? Uh, six, five, and three. Almost saw four. Um, Oregon at 16 lost to LSU. Wisconsin lost to Michigan. Uh, Michigan State and Miami both drop out. And somehow Oregon State, the Beavers, are ranked 26th. So we could potentially have both Oregon teams ranked, which very rare for that to happen. And we are ranked fourth in the media poll with a first place vote. In our favor. I think that we should have more than Clemson, considering we didn't struggle against the Sun Belt team that we had to play against. Uh, but they have to play Notre Dame this week, so 
could be a win-win for us. Either they beat Notre Dame and we, you know, have less risk of having to play them in the conference championship game, or they lose to Notre Dame. Notre Dame gets ranked higher and makes our win over them look a little bit more impressive. In the Heisman watch, <laughs> Marquise Jackson is first. What is going on? And Radon Randell moves up into second. Uh, I guess the Heisman voters, after Grayson McCall won it, have just really started paying a lot of attention to our program and for some reason are super impressed. Now, Marquise is having a pretty solid season receiving-wise. 13 catches for 352 yards and three touchdowns this is very, very impressive. Uh, and then, of course, he's got uh, the, the kick and punt return numbers where he's got two kick return touchdowns and three punt return touchdowns. But to have him first on the board there is a little bit weird to me. And Radon, redshirt freshman, quarterback, 85 overall. I mean, he's having an okay season, but seven touchdowns to four interceptions. Uh, 64% completion. 64 is really low. I, I'm not so sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, if we could have two top five Heisman candidates at the end of the season, that would be pretty fantastic. That is absolutely absurd. Not at all what I expected to see, but definitely glad to see it. And I'll be excited to see uh, if we can keep both of those guys uh, up there after the Georgia Tech game next week. Unfortunately, that next week game against Georgia Tech is going to have to wait until the next episode. Uh, if you want that episode to come out as soon as possible, please like this video. Again, 100 likes within the first 24 hour or, you know, somewhere around there. I'll probably be pretty generous. Uh, and we'll release back-to-back -back videos, back-to-back -back days, and, uh, you know, get through this Georgia Tech game a little bit sooner. If you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified when new content comes out, please feel free to hit subscribe. It means the world to me. And, uh, again, I really do appreciate the support you guys show for this series. Uh, it's pretty incredible. And then, you know, of course, while you're down there, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as a link to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get this for yourself. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.